So some of you might have seen when I built my first vacuum casting setup out of an aluminum pipe. It worked great until I had a blowout. I had a leak through my perforated flask and the molten bronze melted a hole right through the side of the aluminum and through the bottom. So I need to remake my vacuum casting setup with a few modifications. First modification, I'm using a steel pipe this time. I have a six inch flask and it's hard to find a pipe the exact right size. Six inches is too tight, but I was able to find a seven inch pipe. That's just a little too loose. So I got this laser cut flange ring, which is exactly six inches, and I'll weld that to the pipe to size it down. I'm gonna reuse my vacuum gauge and since I wasn't able to weld this on and it's only stuck on there with silicone rubber, it's pretty easy to tear off. And I want to make sure I have enough room for my flask, so I'm going to mark where that sits on the pipe before I drill my hole. This bit was expensive, but it works pretty well. Sometimes it's worth it to have a nice tool. The hole tapped in there, so I'm going to weld this little port and vacuum gauge in that hole. But before I get to that, I need to weld this flange ring to the top of the pipe so it'll hold the ring of my flask. The flask is exactly six inches, so is the flange ring. It's just a little too tight to go on there, so I need to hit this with my grinder. Now, I didn't need a whole lot of precision with this, so I just took a grinding wheel and kept whittling away with it until I had a bigger hole. So the ring now fits on there with room to spare. Well, there's a big aspect to working with hot metal that I forgot to account for here. Let me know if you can think of what that is. Perfect. So now we just have to weld this on. I only made a few tacks just to hold it on. For the actual air seal, I'll use silicone rubber. And I'll tack on my vacuum gauge this time as well. When I had the aluminum pipe, I didn't know how to weld aluminum to steel. I'll use a high temperature silicone rubber to make sure all the gaps are sealed and that it's good and airtight. With my welding skills, this will work better. So it's sealed on the outside and the inside. Last thing I need to do is weld the plate to the bottom. I'll do the same with the bottom. I'll just tack it on a few places and then use silicone rubber to seal it and make it airtight. Now one last thing I'm going to do before I use this is make a safety feature, kind of like a P-trap. Now there's a lot of pieces here. I picked these up from my hardware store and there are a bunch of sections for gas line connections. I don't really like having this many pieces where there's threads that might leak air, but I figured if I give them a good coating of silicone rubber and screwed them on, all those places would be airtight and no air would get through. Now if I do have another blowout, the bottom of the chamber will act as a reservoir to hold most of the molten metal. But if something splashes and gets sucked up the tube, I wanted to have a secondary protector for the vacuum pump. Now this is sealed up and should be airtight. Now the theory behind this is if any metal breaks through and the vacuum chamber gets sucked up into the smaller tube, it goes into this open chamber, drops down to the bottom, and does not continue directly to the vacuum pump. Just a little extra safeguard to keep that expensive vacuum pump working. So now I've got some half inch PVC steel wire reinforced hose. The wire keeps the hose from pinching shut. But once I'm hooked up with this, I should be ready to test it. Every time I try to use a rubber pad, I either don't get it to seal or I burn it up, so I just make my own with liquid silicone. Now here's where a little bit of scientific foresight would have helped a lot. I forgot about thermal expansion. If you think about that flask, it heats up from zero to over a thousand degrees. Everything is going to be expanding and stretching out, and when I put that in there, it wouldn't fit. It fit in there just fine when it was cool, but heat everything up? No way. So I had to take it out and do some quick modifications to get this to work. I grabbed my grinder and started whittling away at it again. 
I hooked everything back up just hoping it would work. And it's still a little tight, but it worked. You can see it's got a good pull on the vacuum. That's why I like to have the vacuum gauge because I can tell every time if it's working. Well, that was a surprise. Didn't account for how much expansion there would be. But after some quick grinding, got it to fit. But I'm gonna have to make that even bigger to make it a little more easier next time. I make mistakes, so you don't have to. So after quenching it and checking it out, the casting looks great. Vacuum casting gives such good detail. But with this type of setup, I also have a way to make a vacuum table. So if I have an irregular shaped flask, that's not a problem. I can still do a vacuum pull on it. I just seal a steel plate with a hole in it on the top of my chamber and then draw a new seal on the flat table. And then whether I have a solid steel flask or even a square flask like I have here, it's no problem. I can still draw a vacuum through it. You can see the results are pretty impressive. Even the antennas were captured on this grasshopper. That's the benefit of vacuum casting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next project.